How can you use Meta SAM2 model to build new types of AI application that wasn't possible before, like automated tracking for sports analytics or video editor AI that can automatically blur out passengers' face in street interview? In this video, I'm going to show you how does Meta SAM2 model exactly works, as well as step-by-step -step tutorial of how can you build such AI application by yourself. So Meta released Sigmund Anything Model 2 a couple of weeks ago which is a model that can do extremely accurate object tracking and segmentation in videos, even in some very complex things where the object is covered by multiple different things. And this model is very interesting because some of the use cases that was very expensive or difficult to build regarding computer vision now it became really accessible to build, like building automated system to detect shoplifting or monitor retail and cafe stores. Because with model like SAM2, it is multiple magnitude cheaper to prepare training data for specific type of computer vision task. And even some kind of interesting use case where you can just allow people to search across the video to find a specific objects. And Meta is referring to this model as a real-time promptable object segmentation. So what exactly does this real-time promptable object segmentation mean? Well, that means SAM2 model is able to predict the mask lit of every single frame in the video or image. A mask lit is a spatial temporal mask that represents spatial relationship of the object that it is tracking as well as the temporal aspect of how the object exists in previous frames. And the user is also able to prompt the model to get more accurate segmentation result. So they can do positive prompt to track certain object in the video or image, as well as negative prompt to remove certain objects from the tracking. So to get this smooth result, it will break down the video into different frames of images. For each frame, it will first use image encoder to turn an image into an embedding, which is a way that the machine can understand what the image is. And this process will be repeated for every single frame in the video. But at this point, each image embedding is kind of independent from each other. So there's no real temporal relationship between them. And that part will be handled by other components like memory encoder and memory bank, which we'll talk about later. And next, a user can add different prompts on each frame. Those prompts are not our common text prompt. It is more like a visual prompt, including point clicks, bounding box, or masks on top of the image. And those prompt edit will be going through a prompt encoder which will generate a prompt token that captures the semantic meaning of what the user prompt is. So for each frame, we have the image embedding created from image encoder as well as prompt token converted from prompt encoder. And both of those tokens will be fed to the mask decoder, which will be used to predict the mask lit. And what you see here is basically the SAM1 model that is able to segment an object within an image. And the core difference between SAM2 and SAM1 model is the same to introduce concept of memory bank and memory attention. They will basically take each mask that generated for every single frame into a memory bank, which will be used to insert memory attention for the next frame. So there's a continuity and temporal relationship between frames. And this is how SAM2 is able to track object in the video, even though for some complex things where the object is covered by other things in the video. And this is in nutshell, of how the SAM1 and SAM2 model is able to track object within image as well as a video. It is an extremely powerful model that totally changed the game of image segmentation. But your question might be, this looks cool, what exactly can you do about it? And to understand that, it's probably useful for us to understand how was the original segment anything model one was used for the past few months. So there are two types of main use cases I observe people doing. One is that a lot of people are using SAM1 model to prepare and label image data for training visual model for specialized tasks. So image annotation is quite a tedious job and normally require a huge amount of human costs to be able to annotate and track image data that can be used for training specialized model to identify like defects in the production line or medical data. And previously there are visual models that try to do this type of segmentation job, but with the same one model, it is able to identify and segment specific objects in just one go. And this reduces the cost of image annotation by multiple magnitude so that people can create a huge amount of image annotation data to train specific model for certain tasks. So I would imagine this use case will still remain a very big way of how people use the SAM2 model to generate high quality video annotation data for training specific models. But on the other side, it also opened doors for people to use SAM2's zero-shot prompt ability plus other models to build interesting applications. 
like building video editor AI, is able to create visual effects or be otherwise very expensive to build. And there are also people already integrate SAM2 model with drone and CCTV data to be able to do certain tasks like track and compare the health of each farm segments, as well as building some sorts of sports analytics applications. All those use cases that could be quite expensive to build before, now it's actually very accessible for all developers. And things became even more interesting when you start extending segment anything model's ability with other models. For example, you might notice that the prompt segment anything model can accept are mainly the visual prompt like clicks, bounding box, and mask. It can't really do any text prompt. So if you want to build some kind of interesting application where user can just ask a model to find a specific object in the video and apply special visual effects to it, you can't really do it now. But if you combine with other model that is capable to identify object based on text prompt, but not as good as generating the specific mask, then you can start having some quite interesting application. For example, I built an AI application where we combine Florence 2, which is one of the best lightweight vision language model that is capable of many vision language tasks, like take a text prompt to identify object within image. It can create positive based on text prompt like human face to find all the faces on the screen and use negative prompt to identify who are the main speakers. Then use SAM2 model to segment all those passengers' face so that you can apply special visual effects to either blur out their face or swap with something else. And this is just one example of what kind of interesting AI application you can start building once you combine different models together. And I'm going to show you how can you create this step-by-step step so you can start expanding the use case. But before I dive into this, I know many of you just getting started with your AI engineer journey or are trying to figure out what does the roadmap look like for learning AI. That's why I want to share with you this free ebook as an introduction to Python because Python is the main language you need to learn and master as an AI engineer, since most of popular library and framework are available in Python. And this ebook is introduced by HubSpot, who is sponsoring this video. In this guide, it will cover all the fundamentals about Python, how to get started and set up, and basic syntax, methods, and functions that you will need to build AI applications, as well as how to use some of the important third-party libraries for both data analysis and building AI applications, such as Panda, Metaplot, and NumPy. It also shows you example of good code and bad code with coding snips that you can just copy, paste, plug in and play. So if you're just getting started with your AI engineer journey, I definitely highly recommend you to go and take a look at this free ebook. You can click on the link in the description below to download it for free. Now let's get back how can we build an AI application using Meta's SAM2 model. So I'm going to run the code in Google Cloud so I can access a better GPU and making sure you use at least the T4 GPU and you can run this code to check if you're running a NVIDIA GPU. And firstly, we want to download both the Florence model as well as Segment Anything model. And also clone Segment Anything 2 to install everything. And then we'll load the model and processor for Florence 2. Import a few different libraries. And firstly, I will create a function called Find All Faces. So I will give prompt OD, which represent for object detection. And when you use object detection as task type, at default, it doesn't allow you to give more specific prompt to detect specific type of object. And this will basically return every single object it was able to identify with text labels. And then we want to filter out only text label that is related to human face and then return all the bounding box that has label human face. If I run this function on this test image, you will see that it returned three different human faces bounding box. And each bounding box has a specific coordinates. And next function is that I want to use Florent to find who is the main speaker in the image. And this time I'm going to use the caption to phrase grounding. So this is where you can give specific text prompt and then Florence will try to identify the specific object in the image and return you the bounding box. So the rest of the code is pretty similar. So we're going to run the Florence model to find the specific human face with main speaker and then return the list. And if I come up and then try to run this function here, you will see the first image will return three different human faces, but the second function will return only the main speaker who are speaking. And then we can write some function to detect if two bounding box are overlapped. If so, we can filter out those overlapped bounding box. And this is useful because we're going to compare the bounding box from the two function and then try to filter out what are the negative prompt, which is this two, 
versus the positive prompt, which is this one. And in the end, we're gonna combine everything together to create a function called find all passerbys. This will basically return the filtered box. So if I move up again, and then just run this function. So this time you can see it only returned two bounding box that is represent all the passerbys faces apart from the main speaker. Then we can use this to as a visual prompt to send to mode to segment specific passerbys faces. And I'm going to create one function called pixelate region. So this function will basically add pixelate visual effects on the image based on the mask it was given. And you can set up some pixelate size. In the end, I will create one function called pixelate all face where we will try to get the bounding box of all the passerby. And if the result is not zero, then we'll try to pass that on to SAM2 model to get specific masks and run the function to pixelate those mask area. So now let's try to run this function on one single image to see if it works. Okay, so you can see that Florence model to successfully find the passenger's face and then pass on to SAM2 model, which successfully masks the area for these two passengers. And in the end, we're gonna use the function to pixelate these two passengers' face. So this looks like it's working pretty well. The next is that we want to start feeding the video data. To make this apply to video, I'm going to extract every single frame from the video and then going through this processing for every single frame. And now you might ask, why don't I use the actual native SAM2 uh, video processing ability instead of extracting frame by frame? The main reason is because for the video like straight interview, normally there are new people coming all the time. And so far, I haven't really figured out a way to get SAM2 model to just based on one single prompt and finding all the relevant objects. That's why I'm kind of doing this way. If you know how to do it, please comment below, let me know. So I will firstly run a few functions that's going to take a source video and extract every single frame into a folder. So if I go to the segment anything to, it should create a new folder that is same name as a video name. And at default, you probably don't have the pixelated folder yet before you process those image. And then I will create this function to go through all the image with the pixelate all faces function that we created before. And in the end, combine all the frames back into a video and user can set frame rate as well. That's pretty much it. You can see that the model goes through every single frame to identify main speakers and passerbys and successfully identify all those passerbys and pixelate their faces. And this is the final effect. You can see every single frame people's faces has been blurred out apart from the main speaker. And as I mentioned before, this is just the beginning of many different use cases that you can potentially create it. I'm really keen to hear what kind of interesting use case you guys will start building. And on the other side, if you want to have a bit deeper dive into specific projects or have questions you want to ask, you can join my newly created community for AI builders, where I will share step-by-step -step detailed code breakdown for each interesting AI project I'm doing, including this one. And I will also do an interview with some top AI expert. And on the other hand, you will also get a chance to connect with other AI builders who are at a similar stage and might already went through some of the hurdles that you are experiencing now. There is a link in the description below where you can click and join the community. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and I'll see you next time.